Don't forget to click that subscribe and bell icon to receive a notification each time I upload a new video. Hi everyone, it's Mike here and welcome back to my YouTube channel and welcome to 2022. So it's January the 5th um, and I've been spending the last couple of days, we didn't actually start work again until yesterday because um, of the bank holidays, the national holidays um, falling after Christmas and New Year. So actually back to work was actually yesterday, Tuesday the 4th. Um, and I had loads and loads of paperwork to catch up on and post and things like that. So today is really like the first day I've had to kind of sit down and look at my desk. And, um, and I was really in danger of disappearing under my own detritus on my desk. <laughs> A massive amount of stuff that I've just been throwing onto my desk over Christmas. Um, thinking I'll, t I'll sort that out later. Um, well, unfortunately, later's come today. So I've had to sit and clean or clear most of the stuff that's been on my desk. And there's loads of stuff that's just been sitting there for ages and ages and ages um, that I've just never got around to clearing away. It's like empty, scuzzy bottles of paint look. It's just disgusting. <laughs> and bits and pieces of other stuff. I found this wooden frame that I purchased ages ago for putting on the front of a journal. And it's just been sitting there at the back of my desk for months. Bits of tissue paper, Dina Wakely tissue paper, which I did, I think, I used in October for, for Halloween. Still there on my desk. So I thought it was time to actually go through uh, and clear away some space and start tidying up. So it's what I've been doing. So I've managed to get, I'd say, two thirds of my desk completely clear and clean. Um, but as I was going through, I started looking at um, the new MDF journal covers that um, I'm going to be using for next year. So let me just grab my other set, the ones you've seen already. There we go. Because that I was able to just go straight to the place where it was. Um, so that was the set you already seen me create. Um, but what I wanted to do is I wanted to do the addition of a pre-cut spine that you could put in between to stitch signatures into. So and there was the option of doing um, either three hole pamphlet stitch or five hole pamphlet stitch and up to five signatures across the spine, um, measuring about two inches. But looking at it this morning, I suddenly discovered there's a design flaw, um, which basically is if you're using the spine with the book rings, then you can't put the paper in all the way to the top. So you can't have paper the size of the entire spine because the book rings are in the way. So um, because like today and yesterday was the first day since Christmas um, that people have been open, um, I'm not able to actually get down and to the, the laser cutters to have new ones cut until January the 14th is the earliest date I can get down there to actually do some more prototypes. So in the meantime, um, I know people are expecting or hoping to have these ones on the website, which is, this is the reason why uh, I've not wanted to put them on because I didn't physically have the stock. And it's OK doing a pre-order, but I'm glad I didn't now because of the problem there. So what I think I'm going to have to do is remove the four holes for the book rings and move the holes up again for the signatures. And then that will give you the option if you want to bind using a fabric or tape, you can do and still use it for signatures. But if you don't want to use the spine at all and just use the book rings, then you've still got that option. So you will be getting a spine in with the set, just not with those holes. But that's for another day to play with. Um, so I just thought I'd let you know why those journals haven't been on the website. Because A, I've not been able to go and get any cut. And B, I'm glad because the design is incorrect. So better I find out now than later, once they're already cut. 
which I'm sure you'd appreciate. So that's that for today. Um, while I was also clearing up and going through my bits and pieces, um, I picked up my Dina Wakeley multi-surface journal. And this is one that Ian bought me for Christmas um, a few years ago. And actually looking at the first date in the book, it's the 5th of April, 2017. So we're now nearly going into our fifth year or my fifth year using the journal. Um, most of the pages are actually completing this. There's three of the, the white kind of cotton pages at the back that have not been used. But there are none at all. Well, one of the actual canvas fabric pages that I've actually used throughout the entire journal. And I, I think I've actually gone through. Uh, let me just show you the one that I have got that I did do in the journal. That was, what date is this one? November 2017. So that's actually on the fabric, on the canvas, using um, Dina's uh, Moonface stencils actually on the page. And I think that's the only time I've really, or maybe I've used maybe the Hessian page once as well, I think, on one page. But I think that's probably the only time I've actually used yeah, all the canvas pages are actually unused in the multi-surface journal. And I think what I've done in the past is I've actually cut them out. I've actually gone in with a knife and I've slit the page down one side and then I've pulled it out because it's a double, it's a double signature. I've actually pulled it out from the other side and used it in other projects, in other journals, which, you know, which is okay to do because it's yours, you've paid your money, you can use it however you like. Um, but I've left loads of them in. And I thought today, um, seems I can't do what I wanted to do because of that design flaw, I've actually going to use those journals. I think I'm going to use one of the canvas pages in my Dina Wakeley multi-surface because I haven't for such a long time. So now that I've stopped waffling for seven minutes, Turn over to my overhead camera and I'll show you what I'm going to create. Okay, so I've got my multi-surface journal open at the fabric page. I've just put some kitchen towel underneath because I'm going to be spraying colour onto this. I don't want it to soak through and go through to the other page because it is fabric after all. So there's a little bit of a barrier between me and it. Um, the other thing is I've gone through like, some bits and pieces, like this, I told you there was detritus on my desk, is what I'm trying to say. So I've gone through and I've pulled out a lot of bits and pieces um, that are all made up from various different collections. There's some Tim Holtzy stuff, um, there's some random numbers, there's some cigarette cards, player cigarettes from the 50s and 60s. There's bits and pieces from all over. There's a journal voucher dated 1909, Lake Erie and Western Railroad Company, which has been sent to me in Happy Mail, I think from Bet Jacob. Um, there's a, an old sheet of newspaper dating from 1896, Saturday, January the 18th, 1896, I think that date says, 1896, thereabouts. Real newspaper cuttings, there's a bit of dictionary, like I said, number stickers from no idea where. There's some reproduction um, ephemera bits from, like I said, from Tim and other bits from other collections. So just stuff that was kind of like gathering dust on my desk, which is what we're going to use today. So two focal points are going to be those two paper dolls that were now buried underneath. So we've got the two boys. One with the doggy, one without. There's also another one there um, with a little doggy on. I don't know whether it's the same. No, it's definitely not the same dog. Um, but again, similar kind of image that we'll try and incorporate. There's also some stamps, some real British stamps, and these are fairly old, before decimalisation, so one shilling and ninepence. So pre-1973 or whatever it was, 72, 73. Um, I was far too young to remember pre-decimalisation really, so there was another one somewhere, but anyway. Oh, there's a little old photograph of some dogs 
on the mountains of Bremar, Bremor, which is where Caithness, so that's in Scotland somewhere, so it's an old photo of doggies in the Scottish Highlands. So I thought they would all go kind of nice together. So what we're going to do is kind of do a cluster page on this one, but add in some colour. I'm not going to use everything on here, obviously. Um, so what we have got, uh, there was some, oh we got some vintage photo somewhere, there we are. So we'll add some distress. So first thing I'm going to do is just put a little spray of colour on the page. Now, so composition wise, if we look at the two boys, they're going to be the focal points. So he's sitting looking that way. So I think he's going to go at the bottom somewhere like that. So this one then has to go top left hand corner for balance. And then if we're going to put one of these things in there for him to sit on like that, then the main cluster has to go up here with a few smaller bits down here. That's going to have to be. So what I need to do, I'll just grab a quick pencil, is I'm going to just draw a cross there and a quick cross there. And then that line between the two is going to be the composition line. So that's going to be where the focal point is there, that's where the focal point is going to go there, and then that's going to be the composition that draws your eye across there. So I know where to kind of place everything on the page. Okay. I don't normally show you how I do the compositions. After seven years, <laughs> I think it's about time that I actually showed you how I do it. So first things first then, let's grab a little bit of that ephemera and then I'm going to just grunge it up a little bit. Bingo card. And I am using water-based inks here. But I'm not bothered whether or not they get a bit scruffed up, whether they get a bit wrinkly or a bit curly. So the colours that I'm going to be using are the spritzes that I made up from my pigment powders. So I'm just going to just add a little bit of colour there. And so we've got some brown in there. So let's add a little bit of additional colour. So we'll just squidge there and squidge there. And then we need some yellow just to kind of give us a bit of contrast. I think that should do us there. Just give that a quick dry off. Okay, so I've just realised that the pencil that I used was this a Stabilo, a Stabilo All Pencil, which means it's water reactive, which is why it's not disappeared. But hey ho. <laughs> okay, so let's grab a bit of glue on the back of that. We'll place that there. And then I'll just grab a few other bits. Okay, so this is a, obviously it's a photo, it's not a real one. So I'll just drop some glue on the back of that. And then we can put that as a cross piece. And then let's have a look at what else we've got. Some smaller pieces. So we've got a flash card. This does look like it's come from a Tim set, or it could be a Seven Gypsies, or it could have come from anywhere. So let's just stick that there, and then that can come down here. Now, as you can see, I am following that kind of diagonal line. I'm starting to build up pieces along that diagonal line. We're not going to go all the way along it. 
So let's just grab a bit more of that glue. And then let's just see where our chap is going to stand about there. So I think we can afford for that to go there. Just break it into that corner. Not sticking him down just yet. And then I think as well, we've got this stamp, which is already a bit grungy anyway, because it is really old. Like I said, this is 70s, early 70s. So it's nearly 50 years old already, as it is. I think we'll stick him there. Stick her there, I should say. Her Madge. God love her. We've got this little airmail sticky thing here. Right, so let's put a bit of glue on there. So we've added a bit of colour to it. So we've got the yellow there. So let's have a little bit of red up here. So let's just tuck that just underneath the stamp. See, this is why I'm using the spirit glue because I've got wiggle room. Widgel room. Okay, so we need a little bit more down here, just for where the feet are, where his feet are. So let's get a piece of dictionary paper. What we got? Jamboree celebration. That's perfect. So let's just tear a bit of that. Add a bit of distress. Dee -dee 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 -dee. That will do. And then we can add a bit of glue on the back. Like I said, don't mind if this curls up, goes a bit wrinkly. Maybe just a bit too big. That'll do. So I think maybe just something else, just in that corner here. So there's another, what does that say? Trade, Crown Trading Stamp Co. So again, this could be a Tim Holtzy bit. Or it could be a seven gypsies, I don't know. Don't care. Um, as long as it gets used up. Okay, so that's going to be, I think, enough to go. Yeah, that's perfect. So then we need to look at the little cluster that we need to build up just down here just with a little bit of balance like that and then we can add our little chap like so and I think once we've got that down, we're pretty much there. So, a bit more distress. So let's add that about there. Perfect attendance certificate, that's what it says. And then glue on the back of that. Yeah. 
let's just line it up there and then we've got that airmail and then the glue like so and I know we've covered up the piece underneath that doesn't matter it really really doesn't matter and then we've got this embrace the journey let's just grunge that up a little bit and I know it is water based so on these I've got a little bit of a gloss kind of finish to them which means if you just wet your finger you can just reactivate the ink a little. Just bring it in. Just gum it up a bit. I think it was Embrace the Journey or the Remember the Now one. Let's do the Embrace the Journey. Why not? Why are I not indeed? So let's stick that right through the middle and then move it along. So that my young chap sits about there. Okay, now we didn't use that other photograph of the other dog, did we? Yeah, it'll be another day. Okay, so let's add a bit of colour on the edges. You could use the distress pens if you have them or any kind of colour just to kind of give it a bit of a grungy edge. Now normally I don't like the shine on these um, ephemera bits, the paper dolls. It does annoy me but I'm going to leave it on this one. Because we're not finished with him yet. Ah, bingo the dog. And we'll do the same thing for that in chap down there. And then we'll add some glue onto him. can sit just on the end there. Okay, so we didn't use half that stuff, which is fine. Just put it to one side and we're going to use it again. This is the reason why there's always piles and piles of detritus on my desk, because I get things out and I never actually use them. Now we've got some numbers here, so they don't really mean anything, so let's just add maybe just a couple, just so that we've got a little bit of kind of continuity. And then we'll add one more. Maybe just down there. Just add a little bit of continuity across the page. Now, they're all that I've stuck down. So what I want to do is just bring back that colour again. So I've got the sandstone brown. And I just want to concentrate a few bits up in those corners and then where the yellow ochre was let's just add a few splatters just 
just for a bit of visual interest and then we'll do the same thing with that sea green just helps to break up Rest of the page. Now there you go. You see, that's where the glue has gone through the page. That's why I'm glad I left that as it is. Okay, so let me just get that dried off quickly. Okay, so just to finish off, I just want to add a little bit of stamping. So I've got this old um, script stamp from Indigo Blue. It's a really, really old one. Um, and it's been in my collection for ages and ages and ages. There is a kind of, even though it's illegible script, you can't really read it. There is still some bits where you've got the, the loops of the, the G's and the that kind of thing which still come below the line. So there is a right way up. So just to remember which is which, I've written on the back. Um, and I think I'm right in that one. Yeah, I think I am. So I've got some stays on, jet black. I'm not going to put it onto a block. I'm just going to randomly ink it up and then I'm just going to just drop it down so we just get a little bit in that background and then a little bit over here and then finally this one a little bit down here and that's it no more, no more. And there we go. That will do. I think I'm happy with that. So that's one more page done in that Dina Wakely journal. Um, let me see if I can find a pen that's going to write on. It might write on the fabric, but I might have to write actually on the piece of card here. So let's just sign that and put the 5th of January 22. <laughs> there we go. So I hope you've enjoyed watching me to create this cluster art journal page on that fabric page which I don't do very often at all. So if you have enjoyed that please remember to give the video a thumbs up, share it with your friends and if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel already you can do so by clicking the button at the end of the video. That's all for me for now. I'll see you all again very very soon. Bye for now. I'd like to say a huge thank you to all of my angels because without you these videos would not be possible. Thank you.